This is Mary Chib with Bentley Systems. I have created a few instructional videos on the Open Buildings Curtain Wall tool. There is a link to the playlist in the description. But as a user pointed out to me, I have not created one showing how to create your own custom parametric profile for emollient or frame. So here we go. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. So to start, I have created a cell library for curtain wall mullion profiles in my project work set. I did this by simply copying the delivered library, curtainwallprofiles.cel, and then renaming the library. I have also renamed the profile cells that were already part of that library. Now, these profiles are intended to be very flexible and therefore include a number of fairly complex variables that use various expressions and conditions. We will not do anything that complex. I did, however, add a number of additional variations to these standard profiles, giving me a number of additional custom profiles. But I want to now create a different profile, something not quite so standard. Note that these delivered profiles all have a red crosshair at the 00, zero origin of the profile, which is the center of the mullion and the center of the glass line. We will do the same in our cell. So I'm going to start by creating a new model within the library. This will be a drawing model since these are 2D profiles. I'm going to name this model X under our template as I'm going to start by creating a template that has the red crosshair, so I can use that for any new profiles that I create. The annotation scale can be one to one, and we want to be able to place this as a cell and make sure it is a parametric cell. I will go to the view attributes and toggle on the ACS triad so that I can find the 00, zero origin of the file. I am also going to adjust the design grid in this model as it will make it easier to draw the profile initially. I'll go to the backstage, select settings, design file settings. Note that the working units is mm or millimeters. I'll select the grid tab and change the grid master to 10 millimeters and the grid reference to 5. This means there will be 10 millimeters between grid points and a reference line will be shown for every 5 points or at 50 millimeters. I will also toggle on the grid lock so that my inputs will be locked to the grid. Now I can zoom out until I begin to see the grid. Now let's draw the crosshairs. The active level is default, color red, and most importantly, the class should be set to construction. Now I'll draw two lines from the zero, zero origin. And we can now turn off the ACS triad. I will add some fixed constraints to both these lines. First, fixing the line direction and then the vertex at the origin. So that is the template. I will now just copy this model to create a new profile model. I'll change the line color to white with a weight of one but most importantly, I will make the class primary. Now using the grid as a guide, I will draw the basic shape of the custom profile. Actual dimensions are not important, although it is always a good idea to be relatively close. Also, align any edges that should be aligned. Then they will be constrained that way when you use the Auto Constrain tool.
Once the closed shape is drawn, you will want to toggle off the grid lock. Now the profile needs to be constrained. The first step is to use the Auto Constrain tool and select the profile. This will properly constrain the basic geometry of the profile. Note the edges that are parallel have been constrained as parallel. Edges that are aligned have a coincident constraint. And at least one corner has a perpendicular constraint. So that's a great start, but we will want to add a few more constraints. We want to make sure the mullion and the glass are centered on the crosshair. And in this case, we want to be sure that the extended cap is equally spaced on the overall width of the mullion. We can use the equal dimension constraint to do this. So I will select the equal distance tool, select one edge of the profile, select the crosshair, and then select the opposite edge. This will keep the profile centered on the fixed crosshair. I can do the same for the glass inset. Now we will control the depth of the glass inset with a variable, but rather than place that dimension twice, we can use an equal constraint to make both sides of the profile the same length. And I could do the same on the front of the cap. Now we need to add the actual dimensional constraints using variables. I'm going to open the variables dialog. Currently there are no variables. I could simply add new variables, but for curtain wall, there are common variables defined with item types. Let's select the frames, mullions, item type. Now I have the same list of variables that was used for the delivered profiles. Now I will only use a few of these for this particular profile. Let's start with frame width. I'll select the distance tool to create a distance constraint between the two sides of the profile. And then select the variable frame width to define the distance. Now before I define the frame depth, I will define some of the other dimensions like the glass thickness and the glazing inset and setback. Note that when I define the glazing thickness for one side of the panel, it is also defined for the other side, since the lines are constrained to be coincident. The glazing inset is a little too much given the frame width, so I will adjust that a bit. Now I'll define the frame depth. All that is left is the cap extension. For this, I will need some additional variables. I will add two local variables, one for cap width with a value of 25 millimeters, and a second for cap depth with a value of 50 millimeters. Now I can use these variables as dimensional constraints. And finally, to finish up, I will create a couple of variations. I will select the Variations group, then select the New button. 
I will rename the first variation to 50 by 150 plus 50. Then change the variables accordingly. The plus 50 will indicate the cap depth. Then I can apply that variation and the profile shape should update. Now let's add a second variation and make this one 65 by 150 plus 50 and change the variables accordingly and apply. And let's do one more variation and make this one 65 by 200 by 75. And again, change the variables accordingly. And apply. I now have a new profile and several variations in my library that I can add to a new catalog item. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.